Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So hello, uh, welcome back uh, to this uh, mm, uh, series of lectures on uh, combustion in scramjet engines. Now as you, we have discussed uh, in the introductory lecture itself, uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, reasons why uh, combustion is used in air breathing propulsion is because of the high energy density of the liquid fuels. So, in any propulsion device that you see, in any air breathing propulsion engine that you see, whether it is gas turbine engine, ramjet, scramjet engine, the ultimate motivation the is to use liquid fuels, okay, because of the very large uh, energy density that it provides. So, similar thing in scramjets also. So far in the previous class we have discussed how, uh, uh, how the jet trajectory uh, can depend on the dynamic pressure ratios when we used gaseous fuels. Of course, uh, scramjets, in scramjets there has been many instances where gaseous fuel has been used. Um, for example, the X43 series of uh, scramjets that was designed by NASA and Boeing uh, that used gaseous hydrogen. Uh, of course, uh, the reason was that uh, its gaseous hydrogen is much easier, much easier to ignite, and quickly it mixes because there is no such process as like uh, liquid jet breakup atomization, which are inherent in liquid fuels. But then, because of the energy density, uh, that uh, because of the high energy density of the liquid fuels, if scramjets has to evolve as as commercial uh, uh, propulsion engines, uh, probably it will move in the direction of liquid fuels. Okay, so that is why it is very important to analyze or examine the feasibility of using liquid fuels in scramjet engines. Okay, so how do you inject liquid fuels inside a scramjet engine? Of course, uh, one of the ways is to inject it in a in a, in a trans as a transverse jet. That is, uh, suppose you have this uh, as a, the scramjet engine like this. And you um, and from here, so you have the Mach 2 flow uh, entering into the combustor. So perpendicular to the air flow direction, you inject a liquid jet. Okay. So uh, of course uh, now uh, uh, the, the the liquid jet and the supersonic air flow. Okay, because uh, the com the air flow has to be supersonic because it's a scramjet. So the, now the liquid jet and the air supersonic air flow will interact in a very complicated manner, and lot of research effort. Has uh, is uh, is underway to understand what are the different instabilities that develop on the surface of the liquid column, and these instabilities are important to understand because ultimately these will lead to the jet breakup, and uh, the air shear will lead to uh, can lead to atomization, and then of course uh, once uh, droplets are small enough they can evaporate, and this after evaporation the liquid um, the 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 the, uh, uh, the fuel can mix with the air, okay. So uh, this is this is uh, the whole thing. It is very important uh, thus to understand uh, how uh, a liquid jet essentially breaks up and atomizes in a supersonic uh, uh, supersonic cross flow. Okay. Now, uh, what are the important parameters? What does uh, current um, what does the past research suggest? The past research suggests that the most important parameter um, that uh, uh, that that uh, controls uh, this uh, the behavior of the jet of the of the liquid jet where it will go how it will break up uh, how it will atomize and eventually the combustion properties the entailing combustion properties uh, those is d uh, governed in this case also by the dynamic pressure ratio okay so uh, the dynamic pressure ratio once again is a very key parameter uh, of course you see that in the dynamic pressure ratio your momentum is also included okay so it's a static pressure plus is a p plus rho u square that is the essentially the uh, included in the uh, in the in the dynamic uh, uh, pressure ratio okay so uh, this is the so the both the static pressure as well as the momentum of the jet uh, relative to the of the liquid jet relative to the relative to that of the supersonic airflow is is a key parameter here uh, 
Now what research suggests is that, that if the DPR that is the dynamic pressure ratio is greater than 6, okay, that is if the liquid uh, dynamic pressure of the liquid jet is very, very large compared to the to that of the supersonic air, uh, then the liquid jet penetrates of course several jet diameter. That is it is easy to understand that if this pressure, if this liquid jet, so suppose you are considering a, mm, a scram jet and you are injecting the liquid jet here, uh, so your mark this is your mark to flow. So, if this mom if the jet uh, momentum is very high of course, it will go in a uh, it will penetrate much deeper if the jet momentum is weak it will penetrate much uh, 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 much like this ok. And that is uh, here of course, uh, that uh, the what I mean what I mean to say is that if the liquid jet momentum is much higher compared to uh, this uh, the airflow momentum mm, then it will proceed in this manner if the liquid momentum is uh, is weaker compared to the airflow momentum then it will be stay close to the wall ok. Now, uh, you when you are designing, when you are choosing the injector and we are choosing the pressure that uh, with which you are going to inject the liquid fuel, then the it is important to understand where you want to inject your liquid fuel, ok. Now, in certain cases you might want to inject the liquid fuel so that it goes into the main air flow. In certain cases you might have a cavity as we will see later, you might have a cavity here. So, it might be good idea to uh, inject it uh, close to the walls and allow it to stay close to the walls. So, then the idea is that then depending on your choice or where you want to put your maximum fuel, mm, uh, you have to uh, choose your uh, dynamic pressure ratio. So, what research says is that is the if the dynamic pressure ratio is greater than 6, then the liquid jet penetrates several jet diameter undisturbed and then it begins turning and uh, then uh, so it goes uh, several jets um, it goes straight into uh, into it's 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 uh, um, uh, it it's penetrates into the several jet diameter undisturbed and then it begins turning and the surface waves uh, uh, grows uh, leading to uh, surface wave grows leading to uh, its breakup okay so initially if the dynamic pressure ratio is very large initially the jet does not even feel that there is a supersonic cross flow coming it proceeds on its own before leading to breakup if the dynamic pressure ratio is intermediate from 1.5 to say 1.5 to 6, then large jet surface waves immediately develop and the jet breaks up within a few jet diameters. And if the DPR is less than 1.5, then the jet is abruptly turned that is in this case and remains a narrow layer close to the wall. So, this is the uh, different behavior of the liquid jets. Okay. Now, what fuel do you use? Um, of course, we one can use different kinds of fuels like JP10, JP7, etc. But here, once again, if we just recap, so we discussed about jet fuels. Uh, so, jet fuels is essentially um, essentially uh, like a, a mix of different things. But we want to now understand um, uh, the reason why we come to jet A is that we now want to understand typically what can be the characteristic ignition delay in a scramjet engine. Okay. So that is why uh, let's say that if our our jet A is uh, is a if, is a choice, uh, then um, uh, then we have to know that uh, what are the basic uh, the, the fundamental compositions, uh, fundamental constituents of jet A, uh, uh, and what what kind of a surrogate fuel we can use to represent jet A, and then we can find out the ignition the zero degree ignition delay for that fuel air mixture and at the scramjet relevant conditions. So that will give us some idea about how much time does it take for ignition and whether at all it is possible to have ignition in a scramjet where the where where we can have an approximate idea of what the flow residence time scale would be. So, what is jet A? Jet A as you see is uh, we discussed before in the kinetics class is an average uh, formula of about uh, C 11.37 H 21.87. So, we can uh, we can uh, say that and it of course contains a lot of uh, like uh, uh, different kinds of paraffins, end paraffins, isoparaffins, etc. And of course, it has some amount of aromatics also, but the rest are reasonably paraffin. So, uh, that is why people think that end dodecan is a good idea to is a, is a good uh, is a good uh, uh, alkane to represent jet A. Okay. Now, if we do that, what we see is that uh, once again we come back to this um, uh, to this uh, negative temperature coefficient plot. Of course, this is at high pressure that you must understand. Mm, but you see that uh, around this uh, temperature, okay, this thousand by uh, uh, when thousand by T is equal to about one point two. Okay, um, so uh, T is equal to the thousand by uh, one point two. So it comes to about the approximate scramjet static temperatures. So in that region, you see that we have this whole phenomena of negative temperature coefficient ok. So, uh, that is why uh, and, and another important thing is that you see the whole uh, the time scale is of the order of 1 milliseconds ok in this whole range. So, 
A you have a negative temperature coefficient and your time scale is also quite large relative to the scramjet uh, flow residence time scales. In a, a, a 1 meter uh, long scramjet if the flow uh, velocity is 1 kilometers per second okay then your uh, uh, the residence flow residence time scale is about of the order of 1 milliseconds. So, here also from the 0 d ignition delay where you have not considered mixing where you have not considered uh, anything else um, atomization evaporation anything. Uh, so, the pure ignition delay time scale for a 0 d mixture where it is only the uh, homogeneous mixture of uh, endotech and air is uh, undergoing auto ignition and there itself the, uh, the, tau, uh, the tau ignition is 1 milliseconds ok. So, that is why, uh, but you have to understand that now if you want to you design a scramjet engine or you want to predict the performance of a scramjet engine which uses kerosene as a fuel, it is imperative that we use um, a detailed uh, reaction model because this time scale of 1 milliseconds of this ignition delay and this NTC behavior that you see here it cannot be captured by 1 one step chemistry. So, that is why in scramjet engines often it is suggested to use um, detailed uh, reaction mechanisms, mm, but of course, if it is uh, one is using a uh, very different very reactive fuel like hydrogen where these things are not important. So, then in that case one step chemistry might be good enough. So, once again this is just a, we discussed this before just a recap. So, now uh, this gives us a idea of the auto ignition time scales which is about 1 milliseconds. Now, if we go to the uh, to the to the scramjet uh, relevant conditions that is if we go uh, to the uh, temperatures which are little higher that is uh, in this range ok. Uh, in this range uh, which are more uh, scramjet relevant conditions so that is uh, then this is how the temperature uh, the uh, versus time behavior happens in an auto ignition calculation. So, this is uh, these uh, calculations are performed using Senkin um, which is uh, um, uh, which is um, uh, one of the suit uh, one of the models inside Chemkin for calculating the auto ignition uh, the ignition delay for a 0 d reactor where only uh, where you only compute the the uh, the, the change of temperature uh, with the heat release along with the species equation, but there is no transport ok. So, you see that when the when your uh, T in is about uh, uh, T starting initial is about uh, 1200 Kelvin, uh, then you get uh, uh, then you uh, then you uh, get this plot of about uh, where you get an auto ignition uh, ignition delay about 1.2 milliseconds, whereas if you ignite increase it by 1300 Kelvin, then it uh, becomes uh, quite drastically changes uh, and it becomes of the order of 0.3 uh, milliseconds. So, in this range as you see that this is um, at a given pressure of about 0.5 atmosphere that this uh, is a huge variation right. It is a variation of from about 1.2 milliseconds to about 0 0.3 milliseconds and this difference can make uh, can can render uh, ignition uh, possible or impossible. That is you might have a situation where ignition is um, impossible that if we are at 2 t equal to 1200 Kelvin, but you might have a situation where ignition is possible when you are uh, t in is about 1300 Kelvin because it changes by an order of magnitude in this range it is very very sensitive. So, that is why it is important to use uh, detailed uh, reaction mechanisms uh, 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 but typically for uh, in deuterocan air one uses a jet fuel mechanism not this uh, one uh, this is a uh, there is an error um, one use uh, the jet surf uh, mechanism by by the same um, with the same author uh, Hang Hai Wang. Okay. So, um, uh, this is the thing uh, uh, that um, here you see the effect of pressure variation also, but uh, uh, that uh, here also you see that if you go from 0.5 atmosphere to 0.9 atmosphere um, ok. So, uh, uh, your uh, so this is at uh, 0.5 atmosphere and this is at 0.7 atmosphere and this is at 0.9 atmosphere. Okay, so as you uh, as you increase the pressure, of course the ignition delay reduces. Okay, uh, so the ignition delay reduces. So from about 1.25 uh, 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 milliseconds, it goes to about 0.9 milliseconds. But of course, um, you know, pressure has some effect, but it is not as sensitive as that of temperature, where you see that here uh, with a difference. Uh, once again, to recap, uh, with a with a change of temperature of just 100 Kelvin. Okay, in combustion, 100 Kelvin is nothing, right? So by just by a change of temperature of about 100 Kelvin from uh, uh, 1200 to 300 your ignition delay drops by from 1.25 to essentially 0.3. So, it is a factor of 4 almost uh, drop that you get um, in the ignition delay. Okay. So, this has to be um, uh, has to be remembered when you uh, do this kind of calculations and when you cal calculate the ignition delay time of a scramjet engine. 
Now, burning time uh, that was just ignition delay time. Uh, uh, burning time, uh, but these are empirical correlations which with which one could estimate the burning time. Uh, uh, this is uh, comes from the paper by Mitani where um, uh, he uh, used the the burning time. Uh, he defined it as the burning time could be defined as the time to achieve uh, uh, time required to achieve 95 95 percent of the equilibrium temperature. And the empirical correlations uh, suggest that this is uh, the time where. Uh, uh, of course, it is dependent on pressure and but in a scramjet engine the pressure varies ok. So, if you plot the distance versus pressure um, in a scramjet engine you will see the pressure varies like this uh, whereas, this is the point of the uh, fuel injection. Uh, so, uh, what to be what he, he suggested is that uh, you can define an average pressure P V which is uh, defined in this manner which is an integral uh, 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 which is basically a, some a form of an averaged um, uh, uh, pressure and this exponent n is essentially the pressure exponent that is here. And from that one gets an estimate uh, or estimated burning time for 10 to the power minus 3 minus 3 seconds which is 1 milliseconds. So, this suggests that once again if you if you recall that uh, what I said that in a scramjet uh, in a scramjet engine the flow residence time scale is of the order of 1 milliseconds ok. In a combustor it is might be even smaller than that um, it is of the order of that. So, it might be 1 milliseconds, 2 milliseconds, 3 milliseconds, 2, 5, 10 milliseconds. So, 1 to 10 milliseconds depending on the flow conditions. But if the burning time is of the order of 1 milliseconds then of course, you cannot expect that you can just have uh, inject um, fuel into the into the oncoming uh, high speed uh, supersonic air at Mach 2 and it will burn on its own ok and th there we cannot have flame stabilization that way. So, this recall this calls for a need of a flame stabilizer and in uh, scramjets we can have either uh, uh, like a cavity stabilized flame or a strut stabilized flames which will come. But before in going into that uh, just to give you an idea of how the flame inside a scramjet look like. Uh, so, when you inject the fuel of course, as you have seen that that leads to the formation of a um, uh, bow shock um, uh, uh, and uh, surrounding uh, uh, the barrel shock uh, when you inject uh, fuel because the fuel poses uh, the fuel jet poses an obstruction. So, this is a hydrogen jet in injection in a cross flow of air uh, about 2.4 at uh, static temperature of um, uh, 1400 Kelvin. This comes from the work of uh, Gamba and Mungal. Mm, recently published. So, when you inject this hydrogen jet at this point you see uh, this is the OH uh, uh, PLIF uh, images by the same technique we described previously. So, you see that this uh, this um, this uh, um, due to the high temperature of the of this uh, air stream that comes here. Um, so, uh, the flow is coming from here and you are injecting the jet here and you see this um, uh, this uh, bow shock uh, forming and then there is a barrel shock forming here um, uh, and of course, uh, there are like uh, different uh, other uh, structures forming all throughout. Uh, now, um, because of the this jet induces uh, compression and uh, this this uh, shock induces uh, compression and also it induces uh, temperature rise and that causes immediate auto ignition. Of course, the actual static temperature of the flow is also quite high and as you see here you see this uh, kind of flame being forming, but the flame that you see here is uh, is a very strange looking flame. It is like uh, this uh, OH uh, normally does not happen in bulk instead it is like it is uh, like in a threaded form um, like this uh, you see the, the flame being scattered all the way along this. Um, uh, both in the uh, uh, both in the front of the jet and in the, and, in, and as well as in the back of the jet, and uh, uh, people think that this can be the examples of broken reaction zone uh, uh, regime. Uh, 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 these flames belong to the broken reaction zone uh, regime of the turbulent um, uh, combustion regime diagrams that we have discussed. And so, uh, uh, as such, that happens when the chemi chemistry and the uh, and the, uh, the when the chemi when the reaction time scales uh, that uh, when the uh, are are very very um, are much larger compared to the Kolmogorov time scales that is when you get uh, this kind of local broken reaction zones and uh, pr people think that this is probably what is happening here. Okay. Now, uh, so uh, this as you see that uh, if you just inject in this thing uh, you get a it is very difficult to realize a robust flame. So, that calls for a need of flame stabilization. So, one of the flame stabilization mechanism is by using cavity. So, what you have is that you have this uh, uh, scramjet uh, uh, combustor uh, this is the say the isolator and then you have the divergent section and then you can have a uh, uh, have, have a cavity like this. Mm, uh, okay. And 
and uh, then the the flow comes and it essentially as you see um, it uh, uh, it can recirculate here and you can inject fuel into this cavity so this is what is being shown is that so this is the bottom wall where this boundary layer is developing and now as the flow this supersonic flow encounters divergence it uh, this expansion waves form um, okay uh, with this uh, the flow can uh, uh, the flow can expand and which causes these expansion waves and this uh, this boundary layer bends okay and also uh, between this uh, bends into this cavity so this is the uh, this is the uh, so uh, let me just explain um, so what we have is that uh, so this is this cavity is represented here okay so the flow is coming uh, from the from the left to the right and uh, it uh, as it comes there is a boundary layer being formed and here you have a cavity which is uh, formed like this okay so as the flow is coming uh, it encounters divergence and when divergence you have a divergence you have got this expansion waves and these expansion waves for the turns of flow and um, you have a boundary layer coming inside the cavity now in the side the cavity you don't have a direct um, uh, flow of course uh, uh, so there is a shear layer being formed because the velocities of these two of inside cavity and outside cavity are widely different and then uh, the flow essentially comes and recirculates like this okay uh, so now in this recirculating flow because the flow residence times are very high you can inject a fuel okay now you can inject a fuel and this fuel can mix with this uh, with this recirculating flow and uh, this uh, can uh, lead to combustion uh, and it we can have a reasonably steady flame inside this cavity so this is one of the strategies that are being adopted inside a scramjet combustor okay the advantage of this kind of a rearward phase stepping uh, phase step cavity is that um, uh, that whatever the pressure rise happens this pressure rise does not uh, you can essentially shield the flow from the pressure rise that happens due to combustion uh, and second is that the absence of intrusive devices that if you include a flame holder that may generate stagnation pressure loss and require might require internal cooling because this uh, strut uh, if you put uh, just like the bluff body the, what we have seen before in the afterburner that can um, uh, lead to a very high uh, that the, 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 the leading edge of the strut will see um, uh, uh, will see temperatures which are equal to the stagnation temperature of the flow because the flow has been stopped there. So, uh, if we, and if that is of the order of 1600-1700 Kelvin uh, for long term operation you might need some cooling. So, and also it can lead to some pressure loss. Uh, so, uh, that is why um, some people prefer cavity but the only issue is that in the cavity your combustion is restricted to the side. So, the main flow does not see combustion. So, if you want to generate a lot of thrust uh, by accelerating the flow you have to somehow ensure that the main flow gets a lot of the main flow gets into the cavity and uh, if you cannot have a very large uh, divergence immediately so then it can lead to flow separation. So these points um, there are advantages and benefits uh, disadvantages of cavity but this is definitely one of the um, uh, two ways by which uh, uh, flame is stabilized inside a, uh, inside a scramjet combustor. So the next one we will talk about is essentially the flame stabilization using uh, using struts. So this uh, work uh, will essentially report the um, the DLR scramjet experiments uh, reported here uh, by Guerra et al. And uh, the computations have been reported by Genin and Menon uh, in EIA 2009. So we'll uh, just examine this uh, as a case um, of uh, how a combustion, uh, how a flame is stabilized by a strut in in a scramjet uh, in a scramjet type of combustor. So here we have a Mark II flow coming in from the right to the uh, left, and the temperature is 340 Kelvin. Uh, so you need additional uh, um, ignition mechanisms, mm, and the strut is of the order of uh, with a divergence angle of 12 degree. And now you see here you cannot place a, place a bluff body like what you place in an afterburner. Okay, so because um, if you place a bluff body, then immediately there will be a normal shock formed, and this normal shock will uh, make the flow downstream uh, subsonic, and uh, the whole thing breaks down. The whole concept of the scramjet combustor breaks down. Okay, so you have to design this strut very very carefully and it can only have a very narrow edge angle and it cannot always also block the flow too much. So that needs to be um, carefully chosen. Okay. So here uh, because it will have heat release so they had designed a combustor with a 3 degree divergence as you see it is not straight it is not these uh, the top wall and the bottom wall are not parallel the top wall diverges at an ang diverges at an angle of uh, about 3 degrees and uh, the strut has a divergence angle of about 12 degrees and from the center of the strut you are injecting hydrogen at Mach 1 whereas the incoming air is coming at Mach 2. Okay. So, this is how essentially the, the Schlierian image of uh, uh, this uh, uh, hydrogen uh, air flame looks like but we will go into that. So, now um, uh, 
we have not really discussed uh, large jetty simulations for doing compressible reacting flows. So, in this uh, uh, last uh, uh, lecture, we will just show you uh, that uh, this, this kind of complex uh, scramjet combustors can be simulated using large jetty simulations. Okay. So, large jetty simulations in large jetty simulations uh, is uh, kind of intermediate between direct numerical simulations and RANs. So, in uh, for example, in direct numerical simulations, you solve for all scales from the combustor size to the Kolmogorov length scales. Okay. In RANs, you solve for only the average uh, 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 either the uh, arithmetically average ensemble average variables or the Fabry average variables. In LES, what you do is that you solve for filtered variables. Okay. Now, in this filtered variables, what is contained is the information from the larger scales to some intermediate scales in the which belong which, which belongs to the inertial range. So, um, these variables that you see this uh, this all this uh, bar and tilde this bar variables for example, this rho uh, for example, this rho bar is essentially the non density weighted filtered variable. So, in LES larger simulation you solve your governing equations uh, you you make you create first governing equations that describes the uh, the, the, uh, the evolution of these filtered variables and this tilde denote the density weighted filtered variables. For example, u tilde here denotes the filtered uh, um, these are like uh, filtered variables. Okay. So, with this you can capture large scale dynamics and uh, by and have models for essentially the small Kolmogorov scales. Okay. So, uh, this is your continuity equation once again for this filtered variable u uh, i uh, tilde. This is the momentum equation you see emergence of this uh, tau y s g s terms. These are similar to the Reynolds stress terms that you uh, encounter in RANs and you have to essentially uh, have to essentially model for this. So, this is your energy equation I uh, will not go into that and this is your species equation. So, once again these equations look very similar to the actual governing equations, but they have many more terms they are more complex because they have many more terms due to this subgrid scale um, uh, 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 subgrid scale uh, terms uh, that arise okay this that is uh, which are um, like kind of this uh, Reynolds stress terms u i u j term which you remember arrived when we averaged the um, uh, the the Reynolds uh, the the, the Navier Stokes equation. Okay, similar to that, these terms arrive everywhere in this uh, momentum equation, in this energy equation, in this species equation, and one has to have a closure model for that. For example, in this case, this tau i s g s that uh, arrives here is um, uh, closed by this eddy viscosity type of closure, and then you solve for uh, this uh, k s g s similar to this Cape Salon model also. But this is this is much more involved, uh, but has it gives you much more insight. So, this is just to show that this simulations what the simulations can do and it captures can capture essentially uh, very many of this um, interesting um, uh, physics that uh, that is uh, the, uh, that is uh, they are present in these kinds of flows. Uh, so, here you are we are showing the density gradients that is obtained from this uh, large jetty simulations uh, um, uh, and uh, often these are close to experiments and sometimes they are not. So, still now this large jetty simulation for high speed turbulent combustion is uh, is a research uh, is a research uh, topic a lot of advancements has been made but it is not closed and still there is room for a lot of work that can be done okay so uh, both fundamentally as well as uh, developing algorithms as well and, uh, or or developing numerical schemes and um, as well as in terms of fundamental understanding so uh, what i want to show here is that uh, that uh, here we compare the the, the from the from the solutions uh, we compared the density gradients from the non reacting and the reacting um, uh, uh, flow of course you see that they are different but first if we just define uh, uh, the the non reacting flow part okay so you see that uh, here the supersonic flow is coming from the right uh, 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 from the from the left uh, to the right okay and um, here also as you see that uh, the supersonic flow is coming from the from the left to the right Okay, so um, uh, here, uh, as it encounters, as it as it comes from the left to the right, uh, here it is encountering this uh, wedge-shaped body. Okay, and as it is deflected by the tip of the wedge, you have these two shocks which are being formed. Okay, these two oblique shocks which are formed. Let's call this A and let's call this B. Now, uh, what happens is that as they impact this upper and the lower walls they reflect back. Okay, then they reflect uh, back towards the center line of this test section 
and the impact of the shock on the upper wall occurs downstream of the location of the divergence. Okay. So, you see that uh, this, this wall mm, uh, imp uh, this wall interacts with the, this, this shock interacts with the wall after the divergence has started. So, as a result of this, this whole shock structure does not remain symmetric with respect to the center line anymore. Okay. So, this changes the, the, the symmetry and you see that this is uh, uh, this, this whole uh, line the center line of the shock structure has deviated from the center line of the uh, from the from the center line uh, of this uh, uh, of the of the constant area section. Okay. So, uh, but you see here that uh, what happens is that um, uh, this, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the impact of the shock on the upper wall occurs um, uh, of course, uh, downstream of the, um, of the location of the wall divergence and as a consequence the oblique shocks interacts with the upper wall um, expansion fan that is created due to uh, at the at this corners of this uh, uh, flame holder. So, these are the expansion fans which are created because the flow is uh, diverging. Okay. Uh, and these uh, reflected shock structure interacts with this uh, with this um, uh, with this expansion fan and um, because uh, of this uh, inherent asymmetry this uh, whole thing becomes um, asymmetric uh, asymmetric downstream okay now uh, what happens is that uh, you see the at the uh, base of the wedge okay uh, there are these boundary layers being formed and uh, this base of the wedge this uh, 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 boundary layers are formed, but uh, because the pressure inside the recirculation zone is uh, is lower, these boundary layers essentially uh, these uh, shear layers which are formed here now essentially try to converge. Okay, and then these two essentially try to converge towards the center line, and uh, the as this uh, this tries to converge towards the center line. Uh, then, then what happens is that because of the low pressure uh, inside this recirculation zone, the jet, the hydrogen jet, the Mark One hydrogen jet that you are getting inject, you are injecting, is essentially becomes under expanded, and this forms this whole nice uh, diamond shock uh, uh, patterns. Okay, and uh, this this again then uh, uh, pattern uh, continues, and uh, uh, and uh, then this uh, shock diamonds are essentially uh, formed, which uh, leads to the interaction between the uh, between the, with the shear layers. But the most important uh, feature here is that this um, uh, this low pressure inside the uh, inside the recirculation zone causes this uh, uh, the convergence uh, of the uh, 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 low pressure of the recirculation zone um, uh, uh, causes the uh, the convergence of this uh, whole uh, 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 the of the shear layer uh, into the uh, toward, towards the center line. So that is the um, that is what you are um, what you are seeing here. But on the other hand, when you have um, when you have this uh, when you have a reacting flow, for example, in this case. Here also you see that as the, the Mark uh, 2 flow comes here, uh, it is deflected indeed by the wedge okay, and this uh, oblique shocks are being formed and which again reflects back into the shear layer. But here uh, what happens is that now because there is combustion now, because there is now you have, uh, mm, uh, you have uh, got uh, heat release, the pressure inside the recirculation zone is higher. Okay. So, um, uh, as a result of that uh, the since the base of the since the pressure at the base of the wedge has increased okay, as the reaction has been initiated the shear layers do not converge anymore, but rather expand uh, with an angle which is even slightly greater than the 12 degree angle of the wedge. Okay. So, this is the, the, the striking uh, different feature. Uh, okay. Another uh, thing that you will see essentially in the next slide um, that where we have essentially plotted the temperature contour um, uh, which is available from the simulation. Uh, in the simulation you have got all uh, parameters essentially uh, superimposed with the velocity vectors. You see as this hydrogen jet is coming uh, now because of the because of the pressure rise uh, uh, at the because of the uh, because of the pressure rise at the base uh, the, 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 the jet penetration becomes limited okay, uh, into this recirculation zone. As a result you see that there is not uh, of course, there is this large uh, you know, vortices being formed, but the jet as such does not penetrate immediately into the recirculation zone. And as a result of that, so here the, the, the jet can penetrate further downstream okay, uh, so um, this uh, 
the, the this uh, this jet can uh, the this jet essentially penetra penetrates up to this point where essentially you have this uh, uh, recirculation zone also of this uh, entire flow recirculating and this creates essentially a stagnation point okay so this uh, recirculation of the of the of the products which is formed here and this whole jet essentially forms a stagnation point and the essentially you see that the flame is starting from here at this shape okay so uh, the hydrogen jet you see that uh, what happens is that uh, that uh, because of the pressure rise at the base of the wedge uh, uh, th th this leads to a lower penetration of the jet into the recirculation zone okay and the mixing region as you see in this um, in this time averaged field which is shown here from here we can show that uh, we can find that the jet has a rather low penetration and these two vortices on each side of the jet only enhance the mixing of the hydrogen with the recirculating fluid okay that's that's what is uh, happening so this only this these vortices that are being uh, uh, that is that are being present here mixes this hydrogen with the with the air but as such in a normal recirculation zone you get hot products so here you do not see those things here you just have fresh hyd hydrogen mixing with the oncoming air which is coming here okay and only further downstream the this uh, the reaction and the volumetric expansion create a bubble with hot products which is this thing um, uh, which is uh, mm, uh, which is a uh, 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 if you see here only further downstream this recirculation of this bubble uh, mm, of this hot products uh, form and um, uh, this uh, create a bubble of hot products and this circulation is imposed by the outer flow mm, uh, which creates a reverse flow along the recirculation towards the injection okay and thereby the flame is essentially initiated. So this uh, hydrogen jet essentially can uh, uh, can uh, uh, penetrate up to this point where it essentially meets this uh, this recirculating products and that creates a stagnation zone from where the flame is essentially starting okay and these um, uh, recirculating uh, hot products essentially provides uh, uh, energy uh, thermal energy to the to the to the uh, flame which essentially conducts upstream uh, to essentially uh, initiate the uh, uh, initiate reaction in the oncoming mixture. So, this is the dynamics of the strut and as you see here uh, of, of a strut stabilized uh, scramjet flame and as you see here that um, mm, uh, that uh, if you plot if we uh, if we extract the temperatures from different uh, locations the temperature profiles from different locations and uh, validate that uh, the uh, uh, from different locations from the simulation and validate that with the experimental measurements the experiments does uh, uh, correlate well with the uh, with the with the simulations okay so it says uh, provide some amount of confidence in the simulations but then of course you have to uh, one has to be very careful uh, this the simulations are hard simulations and there is a lot of uh, effort that goes into uh, modeling as well as uh, in the algorithm development for these kinds of things. So, with that uh, we have uh, we come to the uh, final uh, some of this uh, instantaneous temperature fields of how it looks like. So, as you see that because the flame uh, is essentially stabilized here and the recirculation bubble is essentially formed here uh, you see that in the instantaneous picture also where you see that the flame is essentially lifted up from the bluff body unlike the case of like uh, uh, like subsonic flames where the flame is essentially attached to the bluff body okay or the here the, the flame is essentially lifted up from the strut and that is happening because as the jet is uh, penetrating into this it uh, meets with the recirculating products somewhere around and that creates a stagnation zone and that becomes the stabilization location of the flame. But occasionally this uh, flame structure that is formed due to the uh, some low velocity regions can occasionally penetrate and it can get attached. But normally it is uh, it is lifted off from the recirculation zone and from the from the from the recirculation zone immediately downstream of the strut and it forms its own recirculation zone downstream which uh, recirculates the hot products. Okay, so this is the then the typically the structure of a uh, of, of the of the flame as you encounter in a in a, in a scramjet combustor. So with that, 
we uh, come to the um, uh, end of this uh, uh, discussion on scramjets where we have essentially discussed uh, uh, one dimensional uh, flow uh, one dimensional um, uh, 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 one dimensional frictionless uh, um, uh, flow in a constant cross section uh, with heat addition okay and we have seen that uh, the addition of heat uh, 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 what happens to is that the addition of heat uh, tries to make the Mach number of the flow to more and more towards uh, sonic. Uh, so, that is the most important um, uh, uh, consequence that we saw and then we looked into the different uh, uh, design considerations of a, of a scramjet engine. Uh, we looked into um, uh, we looked into the uh, the different phenomena that involves in a scramjet engine like uh, whether what happens when you inject uh, a, a gaseous fuel jet, what happens when you inject a liquid fuel jet, uh, what are the different mixing mechanisms that takes place and then we looked into the different ignition delay times uh, which is of the order of uh, 1 milli milliseconds often uh, or uh, and is often co comparable to the flow residence time scales. We looked into burning time and then we looked into the different um, uh, mechanisms of flame stabilization. Uh, we looked into the cavity based uh, flame stabilization and looked into the strut based uh, flame stabilization and we looked into how the different like uh, shock structure interacts with the recirculation zone and the shear layers and how that uh, how it, it is different for a non reacting case versus a reacting case and uh, if you inject uh, the hydrogen through a strut how it uh, 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 changes the flame structure from a normal block body stabilized flames and you can have a stable lifted of uh, uh, lifted flame um, uh, which is just a little bit um, uh, further downstream of the strut than it is uh, under normal circumstances of uh, under, under, under different circumstances of a uh, subsonic flow where you have a flame essentially attached uh, to the uh, to the strut okay so uh, we have discussed uh, these things uh, fundamental aspects of uh, combustion in uh, in scramjet engines and uh, with that uh, the technical part of the course is um, is over we have come to the end of the technical part of the course and we will um, finish it off uh, in the uh, in the next class uh, with a recap of all the topics that we have covered in the last um, 12 weeks so uh, goodbye till then <laughs>